Hey everybody, it's Jacqueline Fletcher Johnson and welcome to this new and I don't know, crazy show that we're gonna see if we can laugh as much as possible uh, during this crazy time. So I am so happy to introduce you to my friend Sarah Horst, who's one of my favorite people, who is an improv genius. And today she's gonna talk to us about improv, but also lead us through some improv so that we can hopefully laugh. Hello, Sarah. Hi, it's so good to be here. I'm so okay. First, before we get started, I want to tell everyone that I literally called you and or well, we had a call scheduled. And then I got you on. I was like, hey, I want to change things up about what we were gonna do. Let's do some improv right now. Can you do it? And she's like, Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm even willing to do this with no lipstick for you. Yeah, let's go. Yes. No and lipstick. Yes, and so tell us about improv. What what do we need to know? Yeah. Um you know, I think a lot of time people think improv like, oh, it's stand-up comedy, it's funny. And, you know, improv is just so much more simple than that. It's really just responding to what's in front of you. It's having no script. It's saying yes and to the circumstance. So if you say, Sarah, let's make a podcast, of course I'm going to say yes. And let's see what happens. <laughs> uh, and one of the fun things about improv is you don't expect it to be perfect. So, you know, whatever happens, happens. I love that so much. You know, I just saw one of my uh, friends, Tara J. Frank, she's been on the podcast before and she, um, she did this beautiful, uh, I guess it was an article that she wrote a blog post about perfectionism and how right now it's just out the window. Yeah. And I, I love that. I love that improv and the whole, like the way that you talk about improv, that it's like this philosophy of living is yeah. so cool. So yeah, talk about that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the oxygen I breathe. You know, professionally, I teach quality improvement. Um, and what I really know I'm teaching are skills for people to be flexible, agile, nimble um, in the face of change. And so um, when you think about improv, you know, you have, you know, if, if you think of kind of traditional whose line is it anyway, where um, a group of um, people are, are performing and they get a suggestion from the audience, um, you know, like, how do they do that? Um, and what you don't, you may not realize is that they're actually um, following an underlying set of guiding principles um, that allows them to basically do collaborative storytelling. Um, and when you're watching good improv, you're basically seeing unbridled um, collaboration um, and exceptional teamwork. And if you kind of break that down, these are skills we can use anywhere. What they're doing is they're practicing trust. Um, acceptance, empowerment, awareness, um, they move things forward and they're committed. And those are really like the six principles that um, can help us in any situation. And as you mentioned, um, the status quo just disappeared. And so yeah. we really have no choice but to move forward. Uh, and knowing how to improvise well, I find really helpful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it's only like from now. I mean, it was always important, mm -hmm. but I think now it's critically important that people know how to think on their feet in that way that improv training really teaches you. And I love that, you know, one of the principles of improv is this idea of building on what exists. So it's not mm -hmm. denying what's there. You know, I have cancer yeah. and I have cancer during the coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> it's just ridiculous like you can only laugh at that and you're and, really trying to win the contest Jackie <laughs> like you've won just stop right there a contest I never, to, yeah I didn't want to enter that one but you know I mean <laughs> we all have things right and we all have to yeah. live with what we got I mean yeah and so that's what I love about improv that it's this whole idea of yes facing facts you know facing what we are in front of right now yeah, and, yeah I'm getting to the and yeah yeah go ahead yeah didn't mean to interrupt but yeah you're getting you're just like this is where I get excited it's this principle of acceptance where you don't negate or deny what's in front of you and you see the things that are given as gifts and offerings like yeah I wouldn't have chosen that and I'm gonna deal with it and move forward and this concept of saying yes and 
um, allows you to kind of balance those tensions and polarities, things that feel contradictory. You really are challenging yourself to say, how can these two things be true? Like life is not this binary choice of, you know, I'm, I'm all in on one thing. It's how can, you know, you're doing it. How can I have cancer and have a kick-ass podcast? You know, how can we have the coronavirus and still find joy in our lives? Um, I don't have the great answers, but when you're um, being improvisational, um, you're accepting it and figuring it out and saying, how can these two things be true? And um, yeah, and it's interesting to see what's coming out of it. You know, I love that so much. And I love that you take this philosophy. I mean, because you take this into healthcare organizations yeah, with scientists and with doctors <laughs> and with engineers and with like data driven numbers people. And you get people laughing. I mean, I've taken one of your courses. Yeah. And it was hilarious. Like, it was just it was it was so fun too i mean cuz that's the other thing i keep thinking about through all of this is that you know during this time when it is there's so much heaviness and there's so much bad news coming every day and there's a financial meltdown and i mean there's just one thing after the other after the other after the other yeah. and i just keep i just keep thinking like there's literally only one rational response to this <laughs> and it's like to laugh and to really realize that, that, I mean, because laughter connects you into all of those beautiful, positive emotions. Yeah. You know, as we're going through this and, you know, I do, I do a lot of speaking. I go around, I talk to really smart people. And in fact, they're always like, no, no, but our audience is smart. Like as if others aren't. Yeah. I mean, this is something that resonates. The, the first principle, everybody, when they think of improv, really kind of embraces this yes and, and that's the fun of it. But that's actually what I teach is the second principle. The first principle that I talk about is trust. Mm. And the first thing you learn um, when you're learning improv is you are enough. And I'm really focusing on that right now. And so why, why you say you are enough is when you're thinking about being on stage and getting a suggestion from the audience, like, pressure, I've got to be funny. And then you do something stupid, you know, da, 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 da. hey, and it's not funny. And you're, you're trying to be more than you are. And so improv instructors will say, just stay in your lane. You be you. Bring what you've got. I love um, And that. that's really all we can do anyway. Um, and we also say when learning improv, fire the judge, that narrative that says you're supposed to be something different than you are, you're supposed to be better, faster, smarter, or that your ideas aren't good enough. There's no time for that right now. Get out there and do it. So um, this you are enough um, really helps me stand in my integrity, stand in my power. And especially right now as we're, you know, facing a crisis together, it's like, okay, here's what I can do. Here's what I can do for my family. And, you know, here's what I was able to do yesterday and today, and that's going to be enough. And we say, you've got this. And so that's really also an improvisational attitude of, um, there's a whole lot of things I can't control. Um, but I know who I am and I know the skills I have. So I'm going to stay in that lane. I'm going to contribute there. And then moving into the yes and and the acceptance. But that grounding, um, and especially, you know, if we look at like, you know, Brene Brown's a gajillionaire talking about people's shame. I mean, there's not one of us that doesn't have, feel shame in some way and doubting and questioning, especially now when we need the biggest, best solutions that ever were, when the solutions don't exist, when we have to be yeah. so improvisational. Yeah. We can't be paralyzed. And so just moving forward, got this. Oh, I love really that. good to me. <laughs> I love that so much. I love that so much because, I mean, yeah. I think right now, I mean, I am not the only one that's been on the floor, you know, like, yeah. I mean, we've, I, I think that there's a lot of people right now that's like, what am I going to do? Like, what am I going to do? And, yeah. and, and so I think to your point, like, I love all of the principles of improv because they are life principles, of course, but they help you get up off the floor. I mean, because you think about it, like, if you believe that you're, you're enough as you are, if you, if you trust your community, if you trust yourself, mm -hmm. you know, and then you say, you know, because to me, what, what, that, what I'm picking up right now on that is, like, you, you have permission then to just be a human being. And if you're going to freak out and cry today, you know that that's okay. And you're going to do it right now. And then tomorrow... Yeah. 
you're going to say to yourself, yes, and tomorrow I'm going to get my butt up off the floor and I'm going to do the next thing, you know? And so that's, I love this so much. Yeah. And that's another key principle of improv is movement is you fail. Things don't work. Um, You're testing stuff. Some stuff's funny, some stuff's not. And what improvers don't do is dwell on it. They say, if not this, then what? And they get up. They don't need to make a little, like, sorry, I'm so sorry. I need to have like a little buzzer like next to my desk to go ding, 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 that should be our million dollar idea. Yeah. Yes. Ding, 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 ding. Oh my gosh. It. I'm getting a bell. Okay. If Amazon is going to deliver anytime ever again, I'm going to get a little bell. I love it. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. It's, um, it's a, it's a great, it, it helps me a lot. And you know, I find as I go into businesses, just giving people permission saying you're enough. The, these tensions can exist. It doesn't have to be one or the other. It can suck and it can be awesome at the same time and it can be hard and you can figure it out and then try something. You know, I, I'm working from home with a five-year-old and a nine-year-old. Ah, and last week was a disaster, like a disaster. I have all these things coming on my text. You know, my phone's lighting up the preschool class. We're baking brownies. We went to a San Diego Zoo on a field trip. All these people like turned into homeschool and moms, I'm like, I'm in my pajamas trying to have a meeting and I I mean, I lost my mind. Um, And I just had to like go into like, Hey, I'm a good mom. I'm a good worker. I'm showing up today. And I learned. And, you know, I also teach improvement. It's everything's just a small iterative test of change. You try, you test, and then you apply that learning and you do it again the next day and it gets better. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, this has just been one big improv, uh, for me. Um, but yeah. And you know, and the, I am enough. I'm like, well, I'm never going to be baking brownies and doing these virtual field trips. I'm not, um, and I honor homeschool moms. I wish I were one, but I'm not. And so I show up and my kids are watching a lot of TV and, you know, I'm, I'm finding some, you know, we're getting some structure, but, um, but it's okay. Yeah. And we're getting up and we say, if not this, then what? So. It's working. If not this, then what? Oh, I love that idea. And I love that idea to just, again, it's permission. Like I keep hearing permission, permission, permission to just be human. A messy human. A messy human. Super imperfect, messy human. (laughs) Oh, I love that so much. Gosh, that's just gorgeous. So um, I'm just, of course, as you know, as I've, I was thinking about this, I was like, I wonder what kind of improv stuff we could actually do. Yeah, I want to play yes and. Okay. Okay. So yes. <laughs> for those listening, the way yes and goes, it's a simple, so our natural tendency is to say no but, uh, because when we're not careful, we actually are just spirit crushing, soul killing jerks. We don't mean to be, but we are. <laughs> And still have ideas. We want to like jockey for position, and people are like, "Well, what about this?" And you say, "No, but my idea is better." And um, and we just do that. We don't mean to. Um, And so what we want to do is practice um, saying yes and. Remember, if what if we treated everybody's suggestions as a gift or an offering, and then we moved forward from there. And so the way the game goes is we say, "Let's have a party!" Yay! 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 I say, I'm going to bring guacamole. And you say, yes, and I'm going to bring, and then you add to it. Okay. So I don't know what kind of party we're going to have, but I'm bringing guacamole. All right. Well, that's awesome. Um, yes, and I am going to bring face masks. Yes, <laughs> and um, I am going to um, bring some packaging so we can bring the face masks to the nurses who need them so how much the hospital <laughs> yes and i am going to bring lipstick so that we can put faces on the outside of the masks to cheer everyone up yes and then i'll put the lipstick on too so i can look respectable for the next <laughs> podcast that we do <laughs> <It's> a- <laughs> hey <laughs> Yes, and I am going to put on, uh, get the boom box because um, we have to have some techno. Yes, and since we're stuck in the 80s, I'm going to bring my comb and my, uh, my extra super hold hairspray and you can tease out my bangs. <laughs> yes, and then we can take some glamour shots and post them online and it'd be hilarious. 
that would be so great. And then maybe I could go on a dating website and have some decent photos. <laughs> You're really solving my problem, Becky. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So it starts with guacamole and now I've got some <laughs> I've got some legit photos for the dating site. You got some glamour shots, girl. And we've helped nurses. We've helped nurses. We've gone back to the 80s. I mean, yeah. let, I'll make you a mixtape after this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That's hilarious. Um yeah. <laughs> So, you know, you went after you uh, and I, had, and, um, we had, I think what I had read a book by one of the, um, the really big improv teachers. Is it Patricia? You know who I'm talking about? She's, I think she was at Stanford. Oh gosh. Well, I'll have to put this in the. We honor Patricia. We honor Patricia. Yes. I'm totally having a brain. She's mighty. She, she is a giant. In she, the, you'd expect <laughs> improvers to have no idea who founded this. So I don't know, but I, I honor her. Yes. She, she was amazing. I believe she was at Stanford and she wrote this book about improv theory, basically. And she was talking about how, um, you know, that it's basically passed from people orally, that all of the games, the improv mm -hmm. games are passed orally, which I love that so much. And one of the games, and I, and forgive me, I can't remember if you taught me this or if it was in her book that I learned it, but um, it was this, this uh, game where you write proverbs together. Oh, yes. I didn't teach it to you, but I do love it. So I think it was in her book. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Patricia, we think her name is um, her book. The giant. Patricia, the <laughs> giant, the improv giantess. <laughs> what can I say? It's chemo yes. braids. <laughs> and so, um, but anyway, and so she did this Proverbs game where you're supposed to write Proverbs together, like, you know, mm -hmm. and a proverb for those listening is forget is just, you know, uh, uh, the uh, um, absence makes the heart grow fonder, mm -hmm. is, uh, an example of a proverb. And so um, I played this game. So everybody's supposed to add a word at a time. Mm hmm. And I did this with my 11 year old daughter. And of course, everything was bodily humor uh, <laughs> through the whole thing. And it was just hilarious because we were just laughing so much playing this game together. And it was so connective. And, you know, it just fired off all those beautiful positive neurochemicals in our bodies. And we felt like this is just so beautiful to be with each other. But that wasn't the only feeling we had at the beginning of the game before that happened there were these moments of deep irritation with each other because we had started to write the proverb ourselves. Yeah. And when the person didn't do what we thought would be really hilarious because they're not mm -hmm. inside our heads, right. we get a little bit irritated. And so until you kind of surrender to the yes and part of it. Yeah, that, that really gets to, so improv, yeah, yeah, it's funny, it's fun, but it's just, I mean, what improv is really improvisational theater, it's collaborative storytelling. Yeah. And that requires a level of connection, a, that level of trust, deep listening, um, really caretaking, be, you know, t passing back and forth, being the leader, being the follower. Um, and yeah, you kind of have to get rid of all that, like that, there's no room for irritation when you're really tuned in um, to your partner and um, and what it takes to be successful creating something together. So yeah, I'm not surprised. I'm not yeah, surprised. It was. It was interesting. And then we got to have a beautiful conversation, you know, with my daughter about, um, you know, what does that mean? Like, why am I feeling irritated? And can I just let that go? You know. So we got to have this whole beautiful conversation about it, which was really beautiful. Um, yeah. So do you want to play? I do. Uh, I need to take a quick break because my children are needing. So let's just take a quick pause, okay? Okay, quick <laughs> just pause. A second. I'm going to pause the recording. The interruption. Oh, there might no be worries. more. No worries at all. You can edit that, right? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> let's see. Let's just. I'm just going to clear my throat. <clears> throat> um, not not uh, the coronavirus, chemo stuff. Mm. All right. Um, so is, is this a game like, would you rather, would you rather have chemo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's another game, right? Yeah, yeah. not so improv. -y. Well, you know, in, in my life, I've, it's always been like, let's just get everything all at once on the same day. 
And so that's just, this is, when, when this all happened, I was like, yep, okay. <laughs> no one is going to call you an underachiever. You've always got to go for it, don't you, Jackie? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Drop the <laughs> queen as usual. <laughs> it's like, well, maybe I didn't give myself the cancer, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Anyway, so should we play? Yeah, let's play. Okay. So do you, want, do you want to start? Or? Uh, I'll, I'll let you start on this one. Okay. Okay, well, um, once a sunfish slept. <laughs> okay. Um, Everyone needs sleep, Jackie. <laughs> Including sunfish. <laughs> Why not, man? I'm tired. There's a lot going on. He's stressed out, man. There's a lot going on. He's working from home with his kids, trying to, you know. Come on. Give um, the sunfish a break. That's right. I don't know what to add to that. That's really funny. <laughs> then once, as we'd say in improv, end scene. Once <laughs> and a sunfish scene. left. That's deep, man. <laughs> Yeah, man. Oh, okay, good. And scene. Once and scene. a sunfish slept. Okay. I'll I got to actually have my notebook because the other part when we were playing this game mm -hmm. was that we found that, I mean, it was hilarious when we were doing it, mm -hmm. but then it was really hilarious when we would do our dramatic readings at the end. Oh, yes. Oh, my god. And gosh. did you read in um, a variety of accents? <laughs> oh, we did it. <laughs> Maybe French. Once a sunfish slipped. That's not French, though. That that was not good. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> but it was still funny. Once a sunfish <laughs> slipped. <laughs> yeah. See, we did this when we were kids. We would, um, yeah. you know, we would do these songs and stuff and make up yeah. songs, and we would yeah. do them in different accents. And yes, the Dolly Parton was always my favorite. I mean. The, you know, the Southern Dolly Parton accent. It was always so fun to sing in that. Oh, okay. You're bringing awesome. me back. We, me back. I, was one, I was watching, I think it was the, night, the 2000 Olympics. Yeah, it was the 2000 Olympics. We were at a party watching skating and somebody was an accountant and got out the tax code and started reading different chapters in a variety of accents. <laughs> Hilarious. I think there was drinking involved. I'm, I'm certain there was, but yeah, it was funny. Try oh it. Gosh, that's hilarious. All right, you're you're adding skits to uh to the shows that I'm going to be yeah. doing. Yeah. All right. I'll, All right, I'll start turn, this yeah. one. Mm -hmm. um, afterwards, brownies taste sort of. Well, that's two words. Does that count? Sorta, sorta, the sorta, sorta. Yeah. Okay. Afterwards, brownies taste sorta fresh and. Tasty and satisfying and um, crave worthy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Those are some good brownies. <laughs> they are. Those are, some those are good. Sorta, sorta, sorta good brownies. <laughs> Super good brownies. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. Yeah. All right. Let's try a new one. Um, yeah. Um, she flew throughout Paris thinking, ouch, that Eiffel tower is stunning <laughs> yeah that was a great example of improv listening where I really wanted to go somewhere else and you said Eiffel and they're really you know I could have said you know lantern or pirate but I really had to say yes and and you you that was your gift and offering so I said tower and and went your direction yeah, but that's, that's kind of the fun improv, and then we'll just do a new one, and, and it works, and it's fun, and uh, oh. you kind of surrender. You surrender to, huh, I want to 
wonder where this is going. Fun. You know, I love this idea, and I know we talked about this a little bit, but I love this idea of surrender as being a part of it. Or maybe we didn't talk about it and I've forgotten, but this idea of surrender to the experience at hand, we did talk about this, mm -hmm. <clears throat> is, um, again, I just feel like I want to ring that bell again because when you can practice surrendering, the, uh, the experience of surrendering with something like this, yeah, <clears throat> excuse me, it is such a powerful training tool that actually leads you to a, a skill set that you can use. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it kind of wraps up those key things. It's, um, you know, in our, in the healthcare industry, we call it psychological safety and to be yeah. able to improvise well, you really need to feel safe. And, you know, my students used to say like, I could never do that. And I'm like, yeah, you could, you know, the only difference between you and me is I'm not worried about looking foolish on stage. And they'd be like, yeah, that's the difference. And I'd say, but here's the deal is when I'm working with my team and when I'm doing improv, I know I can't fail mm. because they're looking out for me. And I also, there's a grace and a mercy within improv when you realize you're all going to try stuff. And when you go out knowing some stuff's going to work and some isn't, and you're just not going to make a big deal out of it. And you're just going to keep moving on say, if not this, then what? And when you do it so seamlessly and effortlessly, and you got to the, um, I think what, it's practice. Yeah. This is a mindset for me. This is a way, this is an attitudinal philosophy. This yeah. is how I approach life. And when you can get a group of people who are willing to um, get into that kind of, ex I'm not going to say experimental, it's just that, that mode of um, let's do this together. Um, and when something doesn't work, we're going to you know, show ourselves self-compassion, show others self-compassion. We're going to move on. And we're going to see where this goes. And that's the other thing with improv. You never know where it's going to end. You know the what. You know like maybe the scene is avalanche or maybe the scene is marshmallow or maybe the scene is schoolhouse. You know kind of what you're going for, but you don't know how you're going to get there. And that goes to just um, you're more willing to step forward on the journey, um, trusting people, trusting yourself, trusting the process, um, and being delighted and surprised where it goes. Oh. Like our, our little prophecies here weren't the most hilarious things in the world, but how fun if we did them more, they really get better and better. And yeah. um, who cares if they're awesome, you know? Yeah. They're fun. Oh, they're somewhere. they are fun. And, it, and the community that it builds and hi, <laughs> how yeah. you doing? Yeah, my kid's working from home with me. She oh, is reading whoa. a comic book in German. She's in five, German. She doesn't read German or English, but yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> well, I just, you know, I can't thank you enough. I mean, this is just exactly what I was hoping for because um, A, amazing information that you're sharing with people. B, I laughed and selfishly, that's exactly what I was <laughs> looking for. And C, I just so value your vision of the world. And so I just feel um, so grateful that you, uh, agreed to be on the show and to, you know, share what you do with the world because it's so helpful for people. And I think, especially now, the work that you do, the work that all artists do um, is really critical and important. And it's only going to be more important going forward to help people recover from this time. Um, yeah, yeah. So thank you. Oh, it's really my pleasure. And you are just a delight. You're like my spirit animal. I just, um, I find you so refreshing and just, yeah, thanks for calling and say, I want to laugh with me and uh, <laughs> let's, let's do this and, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. So yeah. thank you for having me. What a pleasure. Oh, you're welcome. So is there any kind of final thing you'd like to say to folks? Um, yeah, I think it's just, you know, I was, um, as, as my organization, um, we support um, health systems and uh, basically all of the work we're doing had to hit pause because the health systems are kind of busy right now. Um, and we needed to pivot really quickly um, into a new topic and find a new way, you know, what, what type of support do health systems need? And we convened a meeting and we knew there'd be about 100 people on two days notice and we knew that the work we were going to do was really important. And a woman on my team who is just extraordinary, brilliant, gifted, super talented. She's actually my boss. She said, would anyone else want to facilitate this? I'm just not feeling confident. And I just looked at her and I said, you are enough. You've got this. This is what you are made for. And she's like, 
she did it. She just knocked it out of the park. But I think that's what I want to say to everybody is this, these times feel so heavy and so weighty and the decisions and everything is so important. And if we stop and can't move forward, we're not going to get where we need to go. And so if we can have that improvisational mindset and just say, I've got it. I'm going to step forward in my lane. as my best me. We're going to be okay. So, good for you, love. And if I can sit here on a work call with my five-year-old, look at, you know, it's okay. This is who I am right now. And I'm stepping forward, staying in my lane. That's right. Well, and just like your daughter said, we're going to get past 100. <laughs> we sure are. We sure are. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you for sharing that story. And thank you again. You are just absolutely such a shiny star. Thank you. Thank you. Holy crap. Holy crap. I got the